you were to ask me one month ago what my greatest fear was, my answer would have been simple. Bears and waking up in the body of famous Hollywood actor Nicolas Cage. But after, after the event, I can truly say that my greatest fear now is dying alone. Most challenging mountains to climb in the world are as follows Mount Everest, K2, and Kang Chung Junga, or Kang Chang Junga, whatever, it's something foreign. Anyway, Max Climb had conquered all of those easily. Instead, for him, his toughest challenge lay in his past. You know. My son, Maxi, he was always into climbing from a very young age. You know, I was, I was always getting so worried for him because uh, his safety, I kept saying to him, you know, son, it's dangerous. I saw him climbing this tree one day and I, uh, I grabbed him down from the base of the tree. I took him by his collar. I shook him. I said, son, you're just a kid. You're just a onion. You gotta wait till you're older to do that sort of crazy stuff. From then on, Max was not allowed to indulge in his hobby until the age of 18. The moment I turned 18, I immediately started training to become a professional climber. I'd wake up at 4 a.m. every single day just to practice climbing. Two years later, Max became the first person to summon Mount Everest in seven hours, confusing both Guinness World Records and all physicists at the same time. All the awards and the, the praise, that, that was nice, but Really, at the end of the day, it meant nothing to me. The only thing that really mattered was... the tree. It wasn't so much getting up the tree that proved to be the hard part. What proved to be in those trying aspect was getting down. Oh shit, oh god. Oh god. Oh, oh, all right. Cool. Now you wouldn't know it by looking at me, but I suffer from poor depth perception. And it's because of this that navigating my way down the tree proved to be a very difficult challenge. That last jump, I just, I couldn't tell. Was it 40 feet or 100? I don't, I don't know, man. Time just started to drag on. It was okay in the beginning. Becca, Becca, oh thank God. Listen Becca, I don't have much time. My phone battery could die at any second. Listen, I'm stuck in the tree, Becca. I'm stuck in the tree. Just come down, it's literally three feet. No, 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 you don't know that. What are you, some sort of measuring wizard or something? I really don't see what the big problem is. You know what? I do see what the big problem is. You don't trust me. How can I trust you when you're trying to kill me? I'm just trying to help. Yeah, help me die. How can I expect you to stay with me if you can't even trust me? I don't know, because I'm hot? I can't take this anymore. I'm leaving you. Wait, Becca, 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 Becca. 
Am I hot? With Rebecca gone, I was truly all alone out there. I had very little to eat, and I was starting to run out of options. And also, due to the high altitude, it was starting to become difficult to breathe. I don't know what Max thinks happened to him, but it wasn't the height. Not at f four feet. The third day was, was, was brutal. Just brutal. I started hallucinating, imagining things that weren't even there. Ah! A tiger! I guess broken would be the best way to describe how I felt. I just, I lost all hope that I was ever getting out of there. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that, but I pray that you avoid it at all costs. It's hell. It was then, starving, and on the verge of death, I decided to throw a Hail Mary. If I was gonna die, I was dying in my terms. God had other plans for me. Divine intervention. That's the only word for it, really. It was after that experience that I knew that I had to dedicate my life to something greater. Something with purpose. The synagogue. Max climbed and dedicated his entire life to his newly discovered Jewish faith. We were all a little taken aback when he decided to convert. I mean, I raised him atheist, just like his papa. Do I consider myself an inspiration to others? 